Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about colors in CSS. You've already seen me use colors a couple times where I just typed in the color name. This is pretty much never what you want to do. I'm going to show you a few other ways you can get colors with a lot more precision. Those of you who are designers or, or have graphic design in your background or good at art type stuff understand that it's very important to have specific colors. There are, I mean, infinite permutations of colors, so it's very important to be able to pick exactly the one you want, especially if you're working on a website for somebody else and they give you specifications for what specific color they want. So you should almost never use the named colors. I only use them whenever I'm just checking things or demonstrating things. Instead, you should use one of these other options. The first option we're going to talk about is hex colors. I'm going to assume you already understand what hexadecimal is at a conceptual level. If not, Google the Khan Academy video on it. The basics of hexadecimal is that instead of the base 10, which uses numbers 0 through 9, they instead use numbers 0 through 9 as well as A through F. So you count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then you go to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so on and so forth. So that's what that is. Um, again, if you're interested, go check out the Khan Academy video on it if you don't already understand it. So the way that you use hexadecimal colors is by using RGB hex codes. So you start with a octothorpe. R is red, which is the first two numbers. So we could do two Fs, which would be all the R that's possible. G is the next two. B is the last two. So if I save this, this should be entirely red. You should see pretty much no change. See? But if I wanted entirely green, I would do two Fs there. Refresh, and it's entirely green. If I wanted something that was that was green blue, refresh, kind of a bluish green cyan type thing. Two zeros, refresh. Now it's entirely blue, and you can do any mix of that. One that I personally happen to like is B A D A five five, just because it makes me smile. And then I refresh. It's kind of this poop green color. If you want black, you can do a bunch of zeros. If you want white bunch of F's and it'll go away because the background is white. So those are that's hex code, hexadecimal code. It's very simple. The way that you'll use this is pretty much in one of two ways. Number one, you'll be given specs by a designer who says, hey, I, here's what it looks like. Here are their color hex codes. Or you can use a color picker. So if we do color picker, so Google, one, Google has one built in and you just Mm, cycle through, find whatever color you like. Let's, this is kind of cool, it's kind of dark, that's much lighter, I like that. And it gives you the hex. So if I copy this, paste it in here and save, refresh, and I get that color. See, it's, it's that color. So color pickers are handy. Again, I'm not a designer. I don't do good with colors or making things look good. I have people who do that for me. Well, my wife is really good at that kind of stuff, so I, I don't personally do that, but that's how you make the hex colors work. The second option that you can use for colors is RGB. So to do that, you do RGB and you open and close parentheses and you simply put in the colors in base 10. They go up to 255. So 25500 zero, zero, would be all red. 255, 255 is going to be all red and all green, which gives you a yellow. 255, 255, 255 is going to be all the colors, which gives you white. Notice that this is light. This is RGB, so it's not like mixing paint. It's the way that light works. If you've got an LED and, you're sh and you shine full red, green, and blue, you'll actually get white light. So keep that in mind. Um, the other option is RGBA which is the same. So let's go ahead and do, I don't know, 100, 150, and see what this looks like in RGB. Kind of this, that's ugly, so I don't want that. Maybe if we do a zero there. There is kind of a darkish purple. Let's try maybe 200 there. I'm just playing around, just coming up. That's a light purple. I like that, it's kind of pretty. So, but I could do RGBA, and A stands for alpha. Alpha is a number between zero and one that tells you how opaque it is. So you might do, if I do one, you're gonna see no difference, gonna be full opacity. But if I do 0.8, now watch up here, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit more see-through. If I do 0.2, it's very see-through. If I do 0.05, you're barely gonna be able to see it. 
So that's what the alpha is for. It's very useful if you have like a picture in the background or if you have a background color that you want to kind of shine through, things like that. Um, RGBA is kind of handy. So if I set that back to 0.2, it'll get a little bit more opaque so you, you can see it a little bit better. So that's, I like to think of alpha as transparency. So the less, um, the higher the number, the more opaque it is, the lower the number, the more transparent it is. That's RGBA. So those are the three main ways to do colors in CSS. If there's the hex code, there is RGB, and there's RGBA. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.